Hi, welcome to Microservices Lab. In this lecture, we are going to create a controller and a repository for our project. So let us get started. In the previous lecture, we have created this project. And now we are going to add a controller and a repository in this project. So let us start with creating a few sub packages. First, I will create a sub package for holding the controllers. Second, I will create a sub package for holding the model classes. And third, I will create a pack sub package for holding the repositories or repository classes. So the next step is to create a model class that will basically map to the GraphQL request or basically when we use a GraphQL client like Altair or Insomnia or basically the Postman, they send us a few fields, namely the query field and the variables field and the operation name field. So in order to hold those values, we have to create a POJO class or a model class in Java. So let us create that. We will name it GraphQL request body. It will have three instance variables. First one is the query of type string. Second one, the operation name of type string. And the third one is the variables of type map, which contains the uh, key as string and the value as object. String and object variables. So now let us create the getters and setters. Selecting all. So we have created our GraphQL request body model. Now the next step is to create a controller. Let us move to the controller sub package and let us create a new controller class we will call it graphql controller it will only have a single method basically we will see in a moment first let us ma map, uh, mark this with the at rest controller annotation rest controller and let us create a method first public void execute and we will map it to the post method so i'm using here post mapping post mapping value will be value can be anything but i'm setting here it to the graphql it will consume MIME type of the application JSON. Let us see the media type. This one or uh, from org.springframework.http dot application or basically we can call JSON value. And it will also produce same type media type dot JSON value now let us use our model class here so whenever we place a request to this uri we will get the request body let us mark this with request body and place the graphql request body over here graphql request body body now let us create an instance variable private graphql graphql so this is the main object that is available in the graphql java api so we will first import it let us import this one and we will be auto writing this we have to create a bean for it but we will be doing that in the next lecture so let us not get concerned about this 
at the moment so what we will be doing now we will be calling the execute async method here and we'll be providing the execution input argument from the body so first what we will do we will do this execution input dot new execution input dot query now we will be getting the query from the body so body dot get query dot operation name we will be getting this from body again dot get operation name lastly the variables and we will be getting again it from the body not get variables and now we will build this as it is the it is it uses the builder pattern now we have basically provided a execution input argument to the execute async method but as we are using reactive programming we have to do a few more things first let us see what execute async returns so this returns a completable future of execute execution result so execution result is basically the result returned by the graphql runtime so we will wrap this in a mono so mono dot from completion stage if you are not aware about the mono uh, you should check the reactor first it is basically an implementation of the reactive streams and we are going to use it in throughout our course so you have to be aware about it you can see a few videos on youtube for that but we are going to use it on a on our course so basically we are going to create a mono now from completion stage so this is our completion stage thing let us remove this and cut this from here and paste it over here so now our mono is ready but before returning it we will do one more thing as it returns execution result we will be invoking another method on it and that is the to specification so what does the to specification does it basically converts the format or the data and the errors returned by the uh, graphql java api into the format of graphql so whenever a client receives the response it will be formatted in the graphql request for response format so this is everything now let us format it with control shift and f it's okay now let us return this now we will press control 1 and we'll change the method return type to mono map of type string and object so now we are finished with the controller this is the everything now let us create a model class again so this time we will create a entity or we can say our domain object basically we will be we will be uh, creating a simple library app so the model i'm going to create is a book model so i will name it book so first it will be having a id of type int name of type string and pages of type end as well so we are going to use this as an entity and we are going to use the support provided by the spring data r2dbc so we have to perform a few more things on this model class basically first we have to annotate this class with the table annotation 
we will create a table called books which will be mapped to this entity class and this will be the auto generated id so we will mark it as id you can see that these things are coming from the org.springframework.data.annotation package not from the jpa package or something like that because this this is not actually the jdbc we are using the r2dbc here fully reactive so we will have we have to use basically the annotations provided by the spring data now let us create the getters and setters generate getters and setters select all generate now let us create control oh sorry the constructor as well so first we will create the constructor from the fields but we will basically remove the id field as we are not going to provide the id it will get auto generated by the database generate and now let us provide it a default constructor as well constructor from super class So our entity class book is ready as it has three fields the id name and pages now we are done with the entity class now let us move to the repository part we are going to create a repository class called book repository book repository as this is a repository we can either mark with it, it with the com component or with the repository annotation provided by spring sorry it is a repository i am marking it with a repository but you are free to use the component as well so this is our repository so first i will create only a single method that will fetch uh, a book row from the database so let us create it public void get book and it will fetch book according to its id and id will be of type integer so we are going to use the database client provided by the spring data r2 dbc so we will create an instance variable database client and database client oops there's a mistake and we will import it control one again and import database client from org.springframework.data.r2dbc.core now we will be auto wiring this as well auto wired now we have it and we can start implementing our logic so here we are going to fetch a, a book instance or a book row from the database and what we are going to do now we will be using the database client database client dot select select dot from we are going to fetch the data from the books table and the books table is mapped to the book entity so we will use the book entity over here or book class over here from but we don't want to fetch everything we want to fetch a specific book according to the id so we will be filtering or the matching the result so we will be doing the matching part matching criteria and we will be using the this criteria from org.springframework.data.relational.core.query dot where we are basically constructing the SQL for fetching a particular book according to its ID where the ID is 
id the value provided as a argument and we will do a fetch and this will only return a single book instance so we will be doing that only one as you can see it returns a mono of type book we will return it directly and we'll be changing the return type mono of type book Again, I'm doing the control shift F thing. So basically our book repository is also ready. We are done with the done with creating the controller and the repository class classes. Let us do one more thing. From pom.xml we will remove the runtime scope from the io.r2dbc dependency the spring data r2dbc doesn't create a table according to the entity class as it does with the jpa or spring data jpa we have to manually create the sql file and have to execute it so let us create the SQL file. We will put our SQL file over here in the resources. So let us create a file schema.sql. As I don't have any kind of you know plugin available for SQL, I will be using the default editor. They will be open with the text editor. So I will create a new table called books. Create table books. Here I will be having the ID of type integer. It will be the primary key and we will be auto incrementing it. So ID of type integer, it is primary key and it will get auto incremented. Now let us create the name field. Name of type where care 255. Last pages of type integer. Now we are done with the query as well so create table sorry it is books create table books first field is id of type integer primary key auto increment and the name secondly name of vacuum and the pages of type integer now we have to write the logic in order to execute this schema file so for that we have to use a connection factory initializer and we will create it in a we will create a bean for that in our main configuration or in the spring boot application we will create a new bean over here so let us create it public void connection factory initializer it will be using the connection factory so we will provide it the connection factory obviously for brevity i can use the factory let us import connection factory from io.r2dbc.spi now first we will create connection factory initializer it basically initializes the database we can use different we can do different things with this connection factory initializer for now we are executing a sql file using it initial sorry it is initializer equals to 
new connection factory initializer first thing we are going to do is setting the factory in the initializer to the factory which we will be receiving as an argument the next thing is to create a resource database populator or the things that will populate the database so i will create a resource database populator populator equals to new resource database populator and we will pass our sql script to the resource database populator as a sql script is a class path resource i will be using the class path resource class new class path resource here and i will give the name of the file that is the schema.sql then i will set the populator the resource data populator in the initializer set database populator populator now i will return this initializer and we'll be changing the return type now let us mark it with the bean annotation so we have already created a controller a repository a few bean classes or oh sorry the model classes and we have created a schema file the sql schema file and we have created a connection factory initializer which will basically execute our schema.sql file and will create a table in the database we don't have to configure the connection factory by ourselves as it, it it is done by the spring boot auto configuration as we have h2 in our dependency list or in our class path so spring will do the auto configuration for it so we don't have to create the connection factory ourselves so that's all for this lecture i hope you will get something from this lecture please share and subscribe to this channel thank you